So I want to go through a little bit of top and bottom and just lining up on top and the importance of what I call the hustle ride. So as you guys can see, I'm not very long. I wrestle 145 pounds and I'm 5'6". So I don't have a lot of length. I don't really throw legs. Um, so I found a lot of success in top wrestling by just grinding guys out and, and being tough and staying ahead and just really keeping pressure on a guy. So first I wanna just have us line up in the referee's position and talk about the importance of the way I line up. So when I get on on top, you know, you probably have coaches that give you a lot of different tidbits, but I do like to start with my chest a little bit lower on his back, all right? So I can maybe get a little bit of weight creeping forward. I like to go on the belly button, hand on his elbow, all right? I personally like to do a shallow cup on his elbow because I'm trying to get underneath his arms. And the way I set up my back foot is like a runner stance. If you've ever seen a runner, they line up in this stance with their back knee close to the mat, all right? But their toe is ready to push off. So a whistle start in wrestling is super important because this guy wants to get to his feet right away and I wanna flatten them out. So one way that I like to try to think about equalizing that is using this whistle start and using this back knee. So I'm gonna use my toe to drive as my knee immediately, the back of my knee comes right to his butt. Both of my hands are gonna come on the inners of his thigh for a thigh pry. And right now, the goal is to get all his weight on his hands, all right? You know, if, if this guy's not ready, we might be able to bump him to his elbows and his head. But if this guy's ready, we're probably only gonna get a little bit weight forward. But right now, I'm able to start driving with my toes and pushing into this guy where I can start using my knees to pinch as well as walking, where I can now start getting my hands involved to break this guy down. So one of my favorite breakdowns is a chop. But unlike a normal chop that your coach might show you to the same side that you ride, I actually chop to the opposite side that I ride. So if I'm riding on the left side, I'm actually gonna switch my referee's position from lefty to righty because I wanna throw this guy off. If I'm riding on his left side, he probably anticipates a chop to the left, all right? Or he probably anticipates a spiral ride on the left side. So I line up in the stance, my back knee is towards the mat, all right? But it's still off the mat because we have to line up in our normal referees with one knee down, one knee up, belly and elbow. This still aligns. So this knee comes bumping right into his butt double thigh pry, and now my hands switch, and I'm gonna run him diagonally to one o'clock over the shoulder. All right, this is if I'm riding on the left. If I was riding on the right, it would be towards 11, so just the opposite. So I use this good whistle start to create pressure on his hands and knees. Now I switch my chop hands, and I'm gonna drive them directly over this shoulder. Notice, guys and girls, that I'm running with my toes as I'm chopping. I'm keeping height with my head and shoulders and not letting my head go directly to the mat. I'm using his body to brace and hold me up. Yeah, there's no question there that this, it's constant pressure. There's not even a second there that I can readjust or catch my base, and it's just constant pressure, especially then when he takes that one o'clock angle. So as soon as I line up on this guy, he's already starting to feel my pressure. I'm driving with this back toe. I'm loaded, nice and strong, ready to push. And again, like a runner stance, immediately I'm coming off of both knees. My back knee is going right in the middle of his butt. Now I switch my hands to chop, run him down. 
and I'm actually capturing a cross wrist here. So now I have this guy fully flat and I'm ready to go to work. Half the battle is breaking this guy down. So if we can be a little nuanced in the way we do that, all right, we'll have a little bit of an advantage. Like I said, guys, this, my, my opponent is probably thinking that I'm taking everything this way. All right, he's probably already ready to brace and load everything into this right hip so he doesn't get chopped to the left. So I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna continually run my feet until this guy goes down. I've captured a cross wrist and now, depending on what you work on top, we can go to work. Hey, can you show them just from here, this position here with your, your cross wrist? So yep. you chop this arm. So when I chop, guys, this, right, I initially start here. If we were referee's position like this, I'm going to switch, chop, cross wrist. But again, keeping height with my head and shoulders, all right, so they're not going to the ground. If I run my feet too much, all right, I'm going to run past it. So I need to be really diligent in staying back that when I chop, I'm getting this hand involved and really running my feet. Running my feet is what drives him over this chop. I can't use all arm. If I just try to use all arm, all right, I need to get my whole body involved. And by doing that, I'm running my feet. I might even post as I get this cross wrist to keep height. Now I can go to work, all right? Throw a leg in. All right, cross wrist, tilts, whatever you're comfortable with. So once more, I'm gonna line up on the right side. I actually ride on the, on the right, so this one might be a little prettier. But again, lining up in this runner stance is super important for me. I always found it beneficial to get, use this knee to get all the weight on my partner's hands head and shoulders. So again, now I can start going to work because I'm driving with my feet, using my chest, my hips, and my arms to collect everything up and drive through. Hey, Joe, as we close out this segment here, talk about what happens when when I brace, and so man, you, ch you change side or you go to that side there and I brace on you and stop your motion. Talk about what you would do uh, with that. Yeah, so again, I'm always wrestling through a progression and I'm always thinking about what's gonna happen if this guy defends? What's gonna happen if I don't get what I expect? So when I line up, I expect to get him up and all the way down, right? But maybe this guy braces tough so that when I chop and I'm running my feet, it's really hard to drive him again towards one o'clock. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna slide whatever side I'm riding, since I'm riding on the left, I'm gonna slide my near hand up to my opponent's shoulder. I'm gonna drop to a, a knee for a quick second to pull him to this elbow. My hand goes from shoulder, capture wrist, as I get on my toes, and now I start getting out to the side. From here, I can start working this arm out so I can finally get it to his back and start working on turns from here. So that's a really good question. And it's something that we need to know how to do. When we're chopping a guy on any side, maybe I start riding right and I go left and this guy braces me you know, I can try and live and die by the sword and run right through it, but I make an easy transition to the other side, bring him right down, capture this single wrist, and drive him across. Also, for me, I like to work a lot of bar arms, so once I secure this single wrist, it gives me a lot more options to take it out, put it on the back, and start working some top offense from there. Yeah, I tell you, you know, we talk about on our feet when it comes to takedown always changing directions. And that's really what he's doing here uh, as the bottom uh, guy here. When I feel like he's going one direction, then he changes direction to the other. Man, what a great technique. Good stuff.